your majesties welcome back to the channel thank you so much for always returning trust to you and yours are well and you're loving yourself and others like always many thanks to all of you for your support thank you so much for all that you do for this community to keep growing all right um today i want to take you back to something that is happening or i want to take you through something that is happening around us right now uh, it is believed that the spirit of our ancient african queens are reincarnating because of what is being done by some of these young girls from this part of the world that um i'm going to show you right away now when we talk about reincarnation religion has made us believe that um it's, it's a topic that is a taboo i even had a topic about this but i'm just so skeptical to bring it out but um i think i think um faith is just pushing me into this and more because the truth is we come back we come back it's not all of us that come back it's not all of our ancestors that return but um some return and um there is a reason why they return and i'm gonna leave you with some secret of mine i'm believed to be my grandfather who came back <laughs> yes um my parents especially my father is of the opinion that i reincarnated i'm his father that came back um my grandfather died early and um there's a lot of other things that a lot of other things there's some mark on me that was on my grandfather and um um there were times that my father would say he said he's gonna come back and i just look like him a lot of things about me and see it's it's it was just so confirmed immediately i was born that it's i'm i'm my grandfather that came back and do you know what i'm not gonna scare you and i'm not prepared to do that there are things that happen there are places i go to there are things i see that are familiar to me like i've seen it before there are cases there are situations that like i i was involved in it before and i'm like where did this happen where did i see this i'll close my eyes to think but now i don't know if you understand anyway if you want to hear more we're gonna do that in another video so uh we have some young girls in nigeria all right who are building a urine power generator Mm -hmm. you heard that now um nigeria is one of the countries that has the most pop population all right in africa and um, the largest black community of course in the world and uh, one of the major challenges in nigeria is electricity all right because of the population it's not like the continent oh, sorry the country do not have uh, the resources that should provide to some of all these um, social amenities is because of greed like i've been saying in most video greed of leaders and um, sometimes um, nepotism tribalism causes most of these problems that we have in religion as well is involved in most of the troubles we have why the country is not stable a lot of factors a lot of fa uh, factors and again because like i said that's a major thing the leaders have failed so a lot of people are going through what they shouldn't be going through so these girls right now they're young girls 13 14 all right so they they have built this generator that uses urine <laughs> so you don't need to go queue because of course right now petrol is very expensive and it shouldn't be because we have oil we have natural gas we have petrol crude oil so it shouldn't be something that we should um uh, not be having but it's like this because the government steals this and sell it out uh, what more do you want to hear you know all these things so right now a liter of um a liter of petrol is around is almost a, is almost um a dollar and uh yeah is around um 700 750 they're about a liter 700 something that was around 250 um 300 400 as that time people were shouting now they said that they've removed subsidy so it's shoot up to 700 750 
all right so um things are so difficult and you need uh petrol to move your car you need petrol to move your 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 bikes to to get some power to do some other things since the the electricity electricity itself is not stable and again to get petrol is difficult so you know just just imagine what uh, nigerians are going through right now because of bad leadership and wickedness to ourselves so these girls came up with this and <laughs> it's like for these girls to do this that is to say that um because the, the depth of knowledge the level of knowledge in these girls when you look at them speak you're like Mm -mm. this cannot just be these girls this 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 uh, there should be there should be people who had come back because it's like they have some foreknowledge of what they're doing they are so sure of what they're doing they trust what they're doing and that is what makes it so sweet so i'm going to take you through it right now so we take it up from there nighttime in nigeria is one of the biggest ones around half of the country's 160 million people have no access to electricity and those who do can't count on a regular supply. The solution may be found a lot closer to home than you think. The idea has been brewing in this classroom among some of the youngest brains in the capital, Lagos. These 14 and 15 year old students are hoping waste doesn't go to waste. The building of their new urine powered generator is being closely monitored by their teachers. It separates hydrogen from urine. The hydrogen is then purified, dried and pushed into the generator. It can produce up to six hours of electricity per litre of human waste. People in Nigeria have been facing petrol price hikes, a shortage and seen fuel subsidies cut in the past. Other power options are too pricey for many. So if this idea from the classroom can be developed on the larger scale, it may be the light at the end of the tunnel. It's for a chemistry of... lesson with a difference. The teachers are all ears, while their pupils demonstrate an invention they think could help solve Nigeria's chronic electricity shortage. Their invention is the ultimate in waste recycling, harnessing the power of P to make a generator. So we opted for urine, since one, it's a waste product. And if we use urine as our in, as we carry out electrolysis, if we use urine, our waste product or our exhaust gas it's going to be water, and that's not poisonous to our environment. The system works via an electrolytic cell that breaks the urine down into nitrogen, water and hydrogen. 14-year-old Juro Aina Adibola is one of four girls at Lagos's Darigas Private Academy who devised the generator. This hydrogen-oxygen gas mixture goes into our water filter, and the function of the water filter is to remove any impurities from our hydrogen-oxygen gas mixture. The hydrogen oxygen gas then goes into our cylinder here, which stores, temporarily stores the gas whenever we need the gas. The cylinder contains liquid borax, which purifies the hydrogen, making it ready for use. The generator can produce up to six hours of electricity per litre of urine. Their teacher says his pupils have even found a solution to the squeamishness associated with their raw product. You know, people get repelled when it's you know people get repelled at the odour of urine. If it's their own urine, they don't mind, but somebody else's urine, they don't like touching it. To avoid that, they added two molar solution of washing soda at 0.1% inside the urine, so it suppresses the odour of the urine. The quartet, aged between 14 and 15, are hopeful the urine generator will provide an environmentally friendly energy alternative for the poor. Even though wind and solar energy is harnessed in Nigeria, the options are capital intensive and not affordable for most rural dwellers. The young innovators have spent just $64 on their invention and believe with another small investment, they can make the device more compact and more practical in millions of homes throughout the developing world. Your Majesties, you've heard all that and I just hope and pray that um, these young minds are given the attention that they need um, to push on with their discovery to ease uh, some of the struggles of some homes and um yeah that is the prayer because most of the time you see them come up like this and um some group frustrates their effort because of course who would want people to have 
when everybody have everything they need there will be no need to struggle for petrol and of course <laughs> why would the price be so so high if people are not struggling for it it will be okay remain with your petrol we now have our urine shot this urine you don't need to go buy it you only need to drink water and then you have a lot of them <laughs> so that is it so the painful thing is that most of the time you see young minds come like this then those who should help them up are the ones that bring them down you remember um what's his name uh, maxwell chikumbutsu of um, zimbabwe who, who produces some of these um, electronics that do not use electricity all right that use uh, free energy or radioactive um um what do you call them all right it, it uses um free energy not you don't need any electricity to power them and um the painful thing was that his own governments his own governments were the ones that betrayed him his own people betrayed him and this is it and uh, when you look into it into it more you see that there are other external forces that are behind you see them coming like they are the ones coming to help them out mm -mm, they are not since we can't help our own out, we can't protect our own, we give room for the enemy. And that's the painful truth. That's the painful truth. So it's, we, we have minds like this in the continent. We have people who do this. I was going through some document. I don't know because I don't really want to talk about medical aspect or medicine line anymore because um, my first, um, um, what do you call them, strike from YouTube was because I talk about um, some uh, medical um, issues that could be solved without you get it. So I'm really, really um, scared to bring up uh, things that are of medical line. But the f I, I discovered that the first person who the first person who um, organized or engineered the first liver transplant and heart transplant is an African from South Africa. That's what I discovered. And it won't be in any textbook. Nobody will know it. Nobody, like a lot of person did, did not know about this. Like, personally, I never knew until I saw that. So a lot of time attributes are given to those that they shouldn't be given to. And the main thing is seated with you. The main thing is with you. But you feel that you're not capable. And that's the, 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 what they always do. They make us feel we are not capable. And then we just give up. We don't even want to strive to bring out that thing that is in us. So that is it. And they are right to say that the spirit of our ancient African queens are returning. Because of course, um, we have ideas of how to generate energy without uh, polluting the air from ages past. And so it's not something that is new. And um, if this is it, then we should be coming more um, so that we can have people to ease some of our worries, our pains, and um, we discover ourselves. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think? Leave your comment and so there in the section. And I'll see you in my next one. Until then, love yourself, love others. Stay safe, stay positive, always your majesties. Bye for now.